Hey y'all, happy Monday. You guys already know what Mondays are, the best day of the week. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. Not everybody likes Mondays, but it is crime and conviction day, so it makes your week that much better. Okay, if you don't know what crime and conviction is and you're new here, that's fine. It's a series on my channel where I speak about true crime. Now, drop my intro. Listen, today we're going to be putting the gruesomeness and the murder and the killings on the back burner and we're going to be talking about a different sort of crime which is fraud. So I watched this documentary and I just found it extremely funny. And since I spoke about the lottery last week, it's only fair that we speak about the lottery this week. So for many people, winning the lottery is a dream. And you know like how some person say, oh, just make your dream a reality. Well, this person made their dream a reality in a different sort of way. We are going all the way to the UK and we're talking about Howard Wamsley. Now, you know the usual, I will talk about their birthday and their childhood and all of this backstory. Well, for this case, I don't have any of that. So we're just going to like dive right into the person's present time when they committed the crime. Howard Wamsley was living with his wife, Kathy, and they had been married for about five years. Now, Howard was a painter and a decorator. He had his own business. And Kathy, she worked as well, but I'm not quite sure what she did. Howard was about 43 years old and Kathy was 42. The couple had eight children between them. I could not find if they shared any children and I could not find if the children lived with them. At this point in time, the relationship was going that great because they were struggling a bit, not only financially, but they were struggling in their love life. Back in September 1998, the couple were out shopping and Kathy saw a pair of shoes that she really, really liked. They were about eight pounds. Howard noticed that she liked the shoes and he told her to go ahead and buy the shoes for herself. Now, the couple could not afford it. They were struggling financially and Kathy made this very clear. And Howard then dropped a bomb on her and he told her to get whatever she wanted in the store because he won the lottery. This, however, was a big fat lie and he claimed that this lie would buy him some time to get some money together and to save his marriage. Anyways, he told her to keep the news to herself but surprisingly, within a few days he was the one that started telling people that he had won the lottery. First, he told his sister and his brother-in-law and then he told some neighbors and after that the whole community knew that this man supposedly won the lottery. Howard said that after the news spread, person started to treat him differently and was giving him attention. And personally, I think that he liked this and this is why he just carried on with this lie. So Howard was borrowing some money from like banks and stuff. And then instead of paying off his bills, this man took Kathy on vacation outside of the country. He told her that he just wanted them to get away so they can clear their heads and they can figure out what to do with this money. Whenever Kathy would question him and ask how much money he won, he wouldn't give her a figure and he said that they can't do any big spending right now because the money is currently in an offshore account and what they're getting is the interest. And if the money should run out, they have to wait another month because the interest came in monthly installments. Now, while he had this interest money, they would be going out to fancy restaurants, he would invite all of his friends, he would be the one covering the bill, and he was doing all of this with borrowed money. Everywhere we went, you know, for meals on a night or breakfast in the morning, Kathy would say, you pay. You know, as far as I was concerned, we were lottery winners and I'd have paid for the whole day if I could. With this newfound wealth, the bills were still coming in, they were still piling up, and Kathy got a bit suspicious. So for her own peace of mind, she decided to call a place called Camelot, where they would just double check if there was a win, but they weren't able to give her any direct information. What they did offer her though, was a rundown of the winnings, which would take place every Wednesday or Saturday, and the amount. She had this information, she 
went through she's trying to pinpoint when exactly her husband won and she came up with the date October 17th which was a winning of 8.9 million dollars she confronted her husband with this information because she wanted to confirm this and he lied further and said yes in the documentary and I'm not making this up Howard said the reason why he lied is if he didn't lie, she would find out the truth. I had to lie. Because if I hadn't lied, then she'd have known the truth. Tell me if that's not the dumbest thing that you've ever heard in your life. I'm telling you, you know, this situation is just so funny. Fast forward to three months after he told this lie. They were still living in their little townhouse and he was still lying to his wife saying that the money is offshore and unavailable. He wouldn't really discuss anything with his wife as it relates to the figures and stuff and she said that she was just sitting there waiting on the day that the money would come through and their lives would be completely changed. With the supposed interest that was coming in, Kathy and Howard would share it up with their children, they would share it up with their parents, and they would share it up with their siblings. Kathy organized a party at a local country club to celebrate their winnings, and over 60 people came. So they provided food and drink for over 60 people. Howard had promised people that they were going to get checks at this party for whatever reason. So the people attended the party, they ate, they drank, and they were waiting on their checks, but these checks never came. Hope was sat there waiting for the checks. So you told people you were going to give them checks? Yeah, 50,000, 150,000. Let's get this right, Howard. You told people you were going to give them checks that night. After the party, Howard definitely needed some form of evidence of their winnings. I mean, they were spending money, but he hadn't bought anything physical. But to make the lie more believable, Howard thought that it would be the perfect time for him to fulfill a childhood dream of his to buy a Jaguar. He went to the closest showroom and he scrolled around and he didn't pick not one, but two Jaguars. One for himself and one for his wife. Wait, did I just say two? I'm not good at math. Three Jaguars, because he said that he was going to get one for his family member. When he said that he was going to get two Jaguars, the salesman face lit right up and he ordered some flowers for Kathy because she was right there beside him. And when he said he was getting three Jaguars, they popped out the champagne. The sales representative found it a bit strange that someone came in and was willing to order three Jaguars, but then again, the salesman said he had never met a lottery winner. The sales representatives said that Howard put on a front. He seemed to be very genuine. He was talking about setting up trust funds for his kids, and he was talking about helping out the family members and doing all these wonderful things. This man even told these people that he was going to donate a tractor to a village in Africa because he thinks that this is the best way that he could help them. Mind blown. Now, I don't really know how the car situation went, like if he needed a down payment or a deposit or whatever. Um, they never really explained that. So we're just going to move on from that. There were moments where Kathy doubted her husband, but things like ordering three Jaguars made her believe that this is really happening and that this is their life because he wouldn't go this far now, would he? But surprise, surprise, he did. Kathy wanted to move out. I mean, they lived in a nice neighborhood, but they weren't living like millionaires and they were millionaires now. The couple started to look for houses and then they found this farmhouse. Kathy said that it had potential and even though it needed a bit of work, it was close to her family, it was very private, and it was near the countryside. They expressed interest to the homeowners and paperwork was started. They had plenty of plans for the house and Howard got an architect to draw up all of these plans. One of these plans were to install a pool and this was first on Howard's list. Now he spoke to a pool installation man and when the pool installation man was interviewed after everything had happened he said that when he was talking to Howard when they got to the money part of things this would be the part where most persons would kind of step back but Howard was just like yeah this is definitely what I want 
wearing business. In addition to the pool insulation man and the architect, he spoke with multiple persons about all of these plans, but when it was time to pay a deposit, Howard was nowhere to be found. Howard said that the more that he saw Katie being happy and making these big plans and talking about what she's going to do with the money, is the more he got depressed because he knew that he was lying. He would become more snappy and they would argue about simple things and he would say that he was going to step out of the house to cool down. Whenever Howard did this, he would go to buy lottery tickets because he said if he actually won the lottery, it would no longer be a lie. One Saturday, Howard came really close to having this dream come true. He was downstairs watching the lottery and four of his numbers got played and he just needed the other two but that never happened. Howard was now in his fourth month after announcing his lottery win and he was still broke and he was even more depressed than before. So he started to go out every night and drink. Meanwhile, Kathy was preparing for their move and she was giving away everything. She was giving away kitchen utensils, bathroom stuff, furniture, light fixtures, you name it. Strangely, the bills kept on coming and they were piling up and Kathy finally decided to put her foot down and she told her husband that she needed some form of proof that he won this money. Instead of coming clean and telling his wife the truth right then and there, what Howard decided to do was write a check for $8.9 million and lodge it. Now he knew that this check wasn't going to come through, but not for a few days. So he hurriedly printed the statement that would show 8.9 million something on his statement and he presented this to his wife and she believed him. Since this trick worked, a light bulb went off in Howard's brain and he's like, why don't I repeat this? So he had an old checkbook from a closed account and then he started to write up checks, deposit them, print the statement and he would present this statement whenever persons would ask him for payment. So because on the statement it would show money pending, these people really and truly believed that Howard had money. He would use this trick to try and purchase the farmhouse as well because whenever the homeowners would ask for some form of documentation, he would present this. They would call the bank, the bank would see that the money is pending, so they would confirm this and the homeowners would move on to another step of the purchasing process. When it was finally time to purchase the house, Howard wrote a check for almost £300,000 and even though he knew that this check was going to bounce, this man helped these people to pull down their home and move. When the homeowners were interviewed, they said that Howard sat there, he was laughing, he was helping and he had no care in the world. Now on moving day, Kathy woke up bright and early, she was so excited to move into her new farmhouse. What wasn't given away was boxed up and she thought that everything was in order, but unfortunately, it wasn't so. She heard a banging on the door and when she went down there to check, it was police saying they have a warrant for Howard's arrest. The police were investigating a series of fraud involving Howard's previous business, but they had no idea about this lottery lie. Howard said that when he heard that it was police, he was so relieved because everything was over and done with. But this was a big fat lie because when Howard went downstairs, he told the police that he was a lottery winner, everybody that he owed will be paid and the police should come back later. Obviously the police aren't going to take this at face value so they brought him in for questioning and Howard stuck to his lie. He lied from in the morning down to in the night. The police got so tired and they asked him one final time in the night, did you win the lottery? And then he finally said no. The police went to get Kathy and they told her that Howard had something to tell her and he finally confessed after a few months that this was a whole lie. Kathy said that she was so devastated and all she wanted to do was go home and cry. She threw him out and she was the one that had the tough task of telling everyone that they did not win the lottery and everything was a lie. To add insult to injury on Kathy's part, the authorities discovered that Howard had a mistress. 
So after this man claimed that he lied to save his marriage, right? He was out here cheating. But wait, there's more. He convinced his mistress to take out a £30,000 loan because he told her that they were going to start a new life together and this money was going to be put towards a house. So instead of moving on with his mistress, or at least taking this money and using it to pay some bills, this man lied, said he won the lottery, and was using this mistress's money to try and convince everybody that this was true. In an article that I read, it said that he even took the mistress's car and gave it to his wife. So when the wife found out everything, including who the mistress was, she drove to her house, gave her the keys to her vehicle and said, you know, I've been driving around in something of yours and you've been shagging something of mine. I don't know how true this is, but I'll be leaving the article down in the description box. In the documentary, Kathy said that he did all of this because he loved her so much. But to be honest, I think that she was just trying to convince herself and not us. He did meet somebody else that gave him the attention that he did want. Um, he actually asked her to get a loan so they could buy an house. And I think he actually intended going through with it um, because he knew there was no hope for us. Um, but he decided to hang on to me a little bit longer when he got the money through from this loan. Um, he decided to try and warm me back. Um, and I wouldn't accept any gifts or any money off him because there were bills to be paid. Um, so the only way he could spend on me was to tell me that he'd got lots and lots and lots of money. Um, and that way all my worries would be over. So he told me he won the lottery. It was because he loved me so much and he didn't want to lose none of his family. Anyways, after Howard was kicked out, he got a job and he was giving all of his earnings to Kathy. And after three months, she took him back. Lots of people were saying that they would not take him back and that she was a fool for doing this. And I agree. Howard's lie affected people around him and even strangers because the homeowners were affected. They lost about £30,000 because they had to sell the house quickly and they needed to cover all their costs. Fortunately, Howard was not going to get away with this scot-free and he was charged with multiple counts of deception. Kathy stood by him during his trial and she even wrote a letter to the court asking for leniency. I feel Howard should not be jailed for what he's done. Howard did wrong. He knows that and he's very sorry. His motives, however, were not malicious. Did it to keep us all. And I'm standing by him. In 2001, he was sentenced to three years in prison. After Howard's release, he did an interview where he said that he and Kathy are still together and they've gotten past it because she understood why he did what he did. Because his story was so huge, a movie was made from it called Can't Buy Me Love. After three years in prison and all of this media attention, Howard did not learn his lesson. Howard eventually moved on and scammed three older women out of almost £400,000 starting as far back as 2014. He was still pretending to be a millionaire and what he would do was take money from the women that he was scamming and reel in new victims. He would take them on vacations, he would take them on trips and eventually when they got comfortable he would take their money. I'll be leaving the link to one of the victims interviews down below in the description box It's an almost 10 minute interview. It's really interesting and I suggest that you guys watch it So today authorities are still looking for him for these fraud charges It's believed that he's not in the UK anymore and he also goes under the name John Eric Wells Everything that I said today, I got from the documentary amongst other sources, but you know my sources will be in my description box. I'll be leaving the documentary in my description box. I mean, I did put clips of it, 
while editing this video but i just think that you guys should watch it it's like almost 50 minutes but i just found it really interesting there are some parts that i found really funny like kathy's facial expressions when she was finding out some things while filming the documentary it's just mind-blowing because this woman was just so brain dead that's all i can call her no that's all the information that i have for you guys today and it is time for my thoughts now kathy she she was clearly naive because somebody cannot tell me that they win the lottery but we're still living paycheck to paycheck we still have bills we're not living lavishly and stuff like that it's just crazy to me that she sat there for months months believing that this man won the lottery and even after finding out that he cheated on you even after finding out that this man lied you stood by this man i just feel as if her self-esteem was like below ground level that's all i can call it and as it relates to howard this man has no personality and i'm very shocked that he was able to pull this shit off he seemed dumber than a stack of bricks even during the documentary he was just talking and i was there like how how it's not like he was charismatic and charming and whatever i just did not see it anyways thank you guys so much for watching remember to like share subscribe share with your friends all that niceness i will see you next monday and remember to be a beautiful soul not just a gorgeous face bye one day back in september 1998 uh, <laughs> One day back in, let me turn on the AC.